Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder. Thank you for joining me this today. And this week, our focus has been on what to remember when you don't like yourself. And we use this the analogy, the story of the, the, uh, the ugly duckling, it's a Hans Christian Andersen story about an egg that rolled over into a duck farm. And when it hatched, it came out as an awkward, weird looking duck because it wasn't a duck, it was a swan. But, you know, during the early stages, you can't tell it's a swan, it's the ugly duckling. So they called it the ugly duckling because it was different from the ugly ducks. And the ugly duckling began to believe it was, uh, it was a mistake, that it was ugly. And that because the ugly duckling didn't know who it was. And many people don't like themselves because they've been told on the duck farm called your school or your family or your church that, that you're the ugly duckling because you're different. Look, I heard Jeremiah Wright say it many years ago. The great Reverend Dr. Jeremiah Wright said, just because you are different does not mean you're deficient. And he was talking to, of course, to black people who, uh, who were made to feel deficient because black people are different. If you don't have a clear understanding of who you are, then you won't be able to truly be who God has called you to be. And most of us don't have a clear understanding of who we are. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13 says this. First Corinthians 12 and thir or excuse me, 13 and verse 12. First Corinthians 13, and verse 12 says we don't see things clearly. And let's just stop there. We don't see things clearly. I remember when I was a child, they used to have something called the Fun House at an amusement park called uh, Fountain Ferry Park. And Fountain, Fountain Ferry Park, uh, the Fun House was they had these distorted mirrors. And when you looked in the mirrors, the mirrors made your head wide or made your head long or made your body short. But they were curved mirrors to make you look distorted. I knew that that was not a true reflection of who I was. It was the fun house with distorted mirrors. Many people go through their life evaluating themselves based on distorted mirrors. And the distorted mirrors are the people who they have in their lives who do not accurately reflect who they are. And if you get a distorted image of who you are because you looked in the wrong mirror, then you will have damaged self-value and damaged self-worth. I believe the number one reason black kids do not excel is in school is because in too many instances, they are around teachers and other people. Sometimes it's even the parents, let's keep it real, but too many people who are distorted mirrors and they look in those distorted mirrors and they don't excel because they have a distortion internalized, amen, about who they are. They have a terrible inferiority complex. I want you to Google something sometimes, just YouTube this, you know, just put, look on YouTube for Martin Luther King Jr.'s interview on the Merv Griffith show. It was done like a year before his assassination or maybe, maybe even shorter period of time before he was killed. But it's something worth watching. It's on YouTube. Martin Luther King Jr. and Merv Griffin. Merv Griffin, I'm dating myself, was a famous talk show host back in the 60s and the 70s and maybe into the early 80s. But he's interviewing Dr. King and he asked Dr. King, what was the greatest accomplishment of the civil rights movement? And Dr. King said it was not the dismantling of the laws, as important as they were, that prohibited black people from having access to equal opportunity. Dr. King says the greatest accomplishment of the civil rights struggle was that it helped black people develop what Dr. King called a sense of somebodyness. You've heard Reverend Jesse Jackson's um, saying, I am somebody. He got that from Dr. King, who said that somebodyness, a sense of somebodyness is the great contribution because we were told we were nobody. And the mirrors we looked into, amen, was the, were distorted mirrors. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. So if God wants us to have self-worth, and self-worth is simply the belief that you have value and that you have significance and you do have value and you do have significance. And anyone who tries to tell you that you do not have value and do not have, have significance is, is demonic. That's a, that's a trick, amen, 
of the enemy. The great philosopher of Athens, Socrates, was once asked about the brilliant and uh, well-traveled Aclabides, Aclabides, and he said, what's wrong with Aclabides? Someone asked Socrates, what's wrong with Aclabides? Because Aclabides had traveled all over the world. He was brilliant and he had traveled all over the world, but he didn't have a sense of self-worth. And this is what Socrates said about Aclabides. Listen to what he says. He says, the problem with Aclabides, in spite of the fact that he travels all over the world, is that wherever Aclabides goes, he has to take Aclabides with him. Which means it doesn't matter where he goes. The problem is not what's going on outside in his world, but it's what's going on inside his world. And if Aclabides doesn't feel good about himself, regardless of where he goes, he's going to have frustrations. You know, people like that, that regardless of where they go, they always have problems. I don't care what relationship they're in. I don't care what job they have. I don't care what it is. They always have problems. And they always say, well, I got to have a change. If I change and go here, they have play problems when they change and go to another venue. Why? Because the problem is not the venue. The problem is themselves. The problem is, is that they take themselves wherever they go. And if they have a distorted image of themselves, if you have a distorted image of yourself, listen to me. If you have a distorted image of yourself, changing locales will not fix it. It's only when you change your mindset and say something is wrong with me. God, fix me. And when you ask God to fix you, God will fix you. When you humbly come to God and say, God, I'm, I've, got, I've been looking at distorted mirrors. God will hear you. God specializes in healing people so that you realize your significance. You realize, amen, uh, your worth so that you won't have well, the inferiority complex. And I need not tell you what inferiority is. It means that you're the ugly duckling. I need not tell you what a complex is. A complex is repressed ideas that we have in our mind that is associated with past experiences that affect us in our present. Let me say that again. It is repressed ideas, ideas we don't want to look at about ourselves that came from the past that influence our behavior today. That's what a complex is. And they're not real. It's someone else's evaluation. It's not God's evaluation. And God wants you to be healed of that so that you can say to people, you know what, I like me. And if I like me and, and God likes me and you don't like me, then you're the one that has the problem because I like me. And your whole world changes when you can get to that point of maturity in your life. And it is something that is long overdue because if you're messed up wherever you go, the place you go is gonna be messed up because you always are going to take who you are with you. Change you, change you, change the center of who you are and the circumference, the things that are around you will change as well. Let's pray together. Lord, our God, thank you for your word today. Bless your people and help us, amen, to be new people so that when we move to new places, those new places become new because we're new. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining me again with another powerful point to ponder. If you don't have a church home, we invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Email us, newstart at SSC Live. Dot org. We'll pick up on this again tomorrow, but until then, please, during this surge of the Delta variant, stay safe, stay sane, and by all means, please get vaccinated. We'll pick up on this again tomorrow. Peace and blessings.